going on everybody quick video before I get to work here um, looking at doing a quick video on an EGR valve on a 6068 I had to replace one it was uh, externally burnt externally damaged so I figured I'd give you guys a quick look at how it's bolted up so if you have to do one either on a 6068 or a 4045 they're pretty much the same valve I'm not sure computer starting up I'm not sure if the uh, it's the exact same part number or not, but I could probably look into that if you ask. I can try to look that up for you. Um, we're going to look at the EGR valve. Maybe a little bit of what this one, the EGR, looked good. So let's check it out. So this is the new EGR valve that I installed. So what you have here is your EGR cooler, clamp, pipe, comes up near your EGR valve right here. So to get this EGR valve off, most of the time the firewall sits like right here. So it's pretty tight. So I want you guys to see exactly what it looks like here. So the pressure sensor bracket is bolted to the housing. So you have to pull these two nuts, which can get quite painful to uh, try to get out when it's packed in like the, the 4045, especially with the backhoe. These bolts here are very difficult to get out, but it is possible. Um, we got... So you got these two nuts to pull off. You have your pressure sensor here, exhaust pressure sensor here. Uh, the two nuts, that bracket comes off, then you'll be able to pull behind there. There's actually the stud that that nut is actually attached to the bolt, you know? So it's a, so it's a bolt with a stud on the end of it for those two. You have just standard bolts here. So now you have your EGR tube, your gasket, your EGR valve, your gasket, your other tube and the mounting bracket is on this side so you can see those three bolts come through or at least two of them right now you can see that bottom one or not anyway so it comes over here out your EGR valve into your intake so you have your gasket and the same similar stud to that other one is right here you have your nut you have your bolt with a stud on the end of it and uh, so that's got to come off the bracket for that um, harness has to come off in order to pull a tube so you put your two new tubes in or you put your old tubes back on whatever new gaskets this is the EGR valve the connector this little tab's got to be pulled back in order to push down that connector uh, a lot of that's happening on John Deere's right now or it's been for a while I guess so that's what the EGR valve looks like installed and kind of how it's set up and that's a nice view from the back so you can see what you're dealing with blindly on some of the other engines so let's check out the old one and i'll show you what that one looked like so this is the old egr valve um it's really not that horrible um as far as the valve went but it did have some fire damage so we're replacing it anyway this is what the carbon looked like inside of it the egr valve is a butterfly style valve and it has carbon in it which I don't know if you guys can see that car, but I'm gonna try to get in there. Uh, if it focuses, okay. So there's some carbon in there. It's really not that uh, that dirty, but we have focus. There it goes. So we have carbon, right? And carbon's a funny thing because we need we we make that carbon, but as long as that carbon, I don't know if you can see this. It's kind of it's kind of chalky it's it's got to be chalky that's your biggest thing if it's if it's kind of gooey or it has like a, a slimy feel to it and not like a dry powdery feel you probably have a bad EGR cooler and uh, someday here I'll probably be able to get into uh, EGR cooler failure and show you what that looks like but for now that's the carbon you want to see out of your EGR it's black soot more of a soot than a carbon i guess i'm not sure exactly what you want to call it but that's what you want to see is that sooty dry dry soot now in your tubes if you have an EGR cooler failure if you can see in this tube or not but there's bellows right you got all those little little bellows at this up here so in your EGR tube you got these bellows and when it does gum up you definitely have 
an issue with it sticking in there and it'll cause more EGR buildup. So what it does is it creates the chain, chain reaction of EGR buildup over time and you'll end up plugging these tubes if you have a failure. This one did not have a failure, it had some external damage and uh, yeah, we don't wanna use that pipe, that's why the new one was replaced. So we wanna make sure we have good carbon in our EGR, that is absolutely normal. The machine's got probably close to 3,000 hours on it at this point, so this is really, really a good setup for uh, for what we have in EGR. And again, I can stick a this finger in there and show you. There's some good, you know, it flakes off. You can see it falling down. It's not slimy. That's good EGR. EGR look right there. So we will uh, let you know. If you like this video, want to see more like EGR videos or DPF videos or SCR videos or emissions videos, um, I'm going to try to put something together and let you know what I know and uh, we can go from there. So if you like this video, hit like subscribe don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell we got some stuff coming out also check us out on instagram the heavy wrench at the heavy wrench on instagram um, we're gonna be posting some pictures of stuff we're doing in the shop here stuff we're doing day to day uh we'll we'll get some good pretty good pictures and content up there and we'll let you know on instagram when our next video is about to come out and maybe we'll give you a little teaser of what it's going to be so check us out on instagram as always Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Click that subscribe button and uh, let me know what you want to see more of.